Join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Clerk, could I have a roll call, please? Alderman Bowman. Present. Alderman Bachman. Here. Alderman Reese. Present. Alderman Milner. Present. Alderman Dickerson. Here. Alderman Turner. Present. Alderman Long. Absent. And Mayor Hassan. Uh, here, and we do have a quorum. Um, Alderman Long did message me, told me he had something going on at the shop. Was not sure if he would be here on time. He said, depending on how quickly we went through this, he may not be here at all. So. Anyway, uh, moving on, uh, we do not have any ceremonial matters tonight, so at this time I will open the floor to public participation. Anyone who has anything to bring before this board that is not on our already scheduled agenda, please step forward at this time. Up there in front of the house, we took care of it for me. And also, the we can go Sunday. I had a, a deal that I had to have the ambulance out to my place, and I'm very appreciative how they came out and took care of everything and like that. And I just want to compliment them. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right, well done, everyone. Is there anyone else who would like to speak this evening? Seeing no one, I will close public participation and we'll move on to the approval of the minutes. Uh, tonight we have the Board of Aldermen regular meeting from September 5th, 2017. Move to approve. Second. Motion from Alderman Turner and a second from Alderman Dickerson. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Answer approved. Uh, moving on to our agenda items. First tonight, we have a special event permit for Rock World Event Number Two. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Members of the board, for you this evening is the uh, event, per event permit for Rock World. Uh, if you remember, a few months ago they had the event on the square uh, where they blocked off part of the square. They're doing the same thing uh, just a second time. It's the same event permit as last time. This time they're just going to uh, block off Wall Street from Lexington to Marler uh, because they learned from experience last time that they needed that done. So uh, they've asked for that this time. Um, and we are. How are you doing? Good, how are you? <laughs> 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 so, uh, wow, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> Uh, we saw no uh, problems with the last time, never heard any concerns or complaints. They are anticipating a crowd side of about 150, uh, so we are recommending approval. Mm -hmm. I entertain any questions. Any questions tonight? Move to approve. Second. second. I have a motion from Alderman Milner and a second from Alderman Reese. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And it's approved. Uh, next, we have the special event permit for Trunk or Treat 2017. This is an annual event. Uh, this is the fifth year for it. A uh, very popular event hosted by the Harrisonville Rotary in conjunction with the Harrisonville Parks and Recreation. They are asking for a closure of the square on October 29th, Sunday afternoon, uh, to host their Trunk or Treat. Uh, event they'll close the square at two set up till three and then the events from three to five very popular usually the square is just packed with little uh, children and costumes and some other people with costumes so uh, we have had no problems with this event in the past and uh, we are recommending approval i think the dentist sent out a lot of flyers for this to <laughs> attention to. I think they all <laughs> any questions tonight move to approve second Motion from Alderman Milner and a second from Alderman Reese. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? 
Then is approved. Uh, next we have uh, store, storm easement yard work. So we had a problem that occurred uh, on July 27th at the house at 207 Megan. Uh, it's in the rear yard of that house and the rear yard of 208 Morning View. Uh, that yard inlet takes a lot of the water from the neighborhood. Uh, up the street on Elm Street and also up the street on Megan. Um, it, uh, it flooded the house the, the first time and then flooded the house uh, due more to just the, the weight of the water, uh, hydrostatic pressure on the foundation and water got into the basement. So we looked at trying to figure out a way to relieve some of that pressure uh, because it is the way the inlet is set up, it's in a low spot and then to get out to the street where this, where this line runs to the west there's a hump in the yard, so the water, if it, can't, if it can't get into that inlet, it has to then just sit there. Well, it just builds up uh, before it can crest over the yard. Uh, so I talked to Ted Martin. He looked at uh, the elevations. We, we talked about trying to relieve that pressure uh, by cutting out a section of that yard uh, along our easement that's in there, the, the stormwater easement. Um, and we think we can do it for about six thousand dollars if we hire a contractor. It would be less if we did it ourselves. I didn't feel comfortable doing this ju just on our own because uh, this is an uh, unplanned type of improvement. Uh, we had not put this in our, in our budget, uh, and I've also talked to the neighbor where most of this work would be done on. Uh, he's not as in favor of it as I was hoping he would be. Uh, he's more concerned with the uh, uh, the ditches along the south side of Elm Street. That, that are causing him a problem. He did not have an issue with the water, uh, but the neighbor, his, his next door neighbor at uh, 207 Megan did. Uh, and that's, uh, he's kind of worried that this would affect his house, but again, water's only gonna seek its elevation. So if he can push its way out, it will, it will push its way to where it needs to go. And eventually we'd like to cross the street and do the same thing and, and lower that yard as well. But we don't have that planned at this point. So, after the first time this occurred, back in July, we thought we had time to work on it. And then August happened. So now we're kind of pushed. We didn't have a public works committee meeting, so I brought it before the board to see if you want to pursue it or, or have us pursue it uh, before, we, uh, before we would do it on our own. Is it the storm drain, I'm assuming, between the two backyards? Yeah. Okay. yeah so Not the one that's out here by the street. Well, and what, you, what you see is where that line is on uh, packet page 13, where I drew that line in, that is the, that's the whole run that it has to go. So from that inlet in the backyard to the street, there's a hump that's up about three, three and a half feet that we need to cut. Now, it shows you what the cut would be on packet page 14. Uh, you can see the straight line is what we intend on uh, making that, that uh, the ditch line. And you can see with the, the, the hump that goes over it, that's the current yard elevation. And this will be about, uh, at the base, it's about 8 feet wide, and then it extends up uh, probably about 16 feet in total. Which uh, house had water? 207 Megan and 208 Morning View. So, so it, would be the, it would be, the, it would be the, the house that's on the, the south side of that, or I'm sorry, yeah, on the south side of that, that line I drew, and then the other one that's his backyard, that's in the backyard, not the one on the corner, but the one that's... Those two both had water. Right. Is this the guy that doesn't, is not happy about the idea? Correct. Okay. Will that, and that, you don't think that will affect water flow on his property? It should. The water should seek its own elevation. It won't just suddenly push into his, his house. Uh, but that's one of the, one of the work. We're trying to get an easement from him. We'll continue to talk to him about it. Uh, and it might take some work on, on Elm Street to get him to agree to it. So essentially the one is, we do have an easement for the one, or is that what we're looking to? We have a utility <clears throat> easement, and I, I, I don't want to just get on somebody's property without also getting a proper mm -hmm. temporary construction easement, because we may go outside the lines of mm -hmm. the existing easement. Because mm -hmm. we want to feather it back so it's a, it's a decent grade, and it's not going to be hard to mow. No, I haven't had a chance to talk to you about that yet. No. 
I met with the homeowner and the also the next door neighbor on Friday, and we went over this and talked about it. So the neighbor that's not in favor is concerned it could make his problem worse. Is yes, that the he did not give any water for the last two uh, significant rains, <coughs> and is worried that this would somehow affect his property. Mm -hmm. is lower than He's actually higher. So. The first street. The first, first house. house on first house is higher. Yeah. One thing to also put, say is that the, uh, the owners of 207 Megan, they're going to try putting some dirt against their house and, and, and get that elevation up. Uh, but it's not going to solve all of the water that's running into that area. I mean, that's, that's just something that we'll have to, uh, to work on or continue to work on. But I think we can relieve that pressure by getting rid of that pump. Mm -hmm. Happy, can I say something? Yes, you may, since it concerns your property. <laughs> Hi. Um, I'm the owner of 207 North Megan, and we've lived there 14 since 2004. Um, this is the third time in 14 years that I've had water on my basement. Okay? The last two times, the water has been four feet deep in my backyard. From where you see that water inlet, all right, I've got a four-foot picket fence, and the water has come to the top of that four-foot picket fence. Okay, and like Happy said, it's got to go somewhere. All right, guess who's the lowest elevation out of all four houses? Me. So all that water is doing is flowing straight to my house, and I'm doing everything I can. I've got landscaper coming, put dirt around. I've already put. Had I not put the window wells in from the last time it flooded, you know, seven years ago I think it was, um, my basement would have gone completely under because the north, the windows on the north end of my house were about five inches underwater. Okay, so the only choice I have is to come to you guys and ask to do something to get the water flow to flow away from my house. I don't know what else to do. So, and I know my neighbor is con concerned, but he his elevation is much higher than I am. And my neighbor behind me, um, he's got water in his basement too. Now, you also need to consider the two houses on the west side of Macon Street. Okay, um, there's an elderly lady named Mary that lives at the north at the corner of Elm and Megan. Okay, and the way the water flows, it comes between our four houses. And then if you look to the west, the way the, the ground is cut, it's actually closer to Mary's house, and it's not even over the drainage ditch. It's on the north side of the drainage ditch. So the last two floods, the water has gone all the way into her garage and into her basement. Okay, so I know Happy is saying that, you know, at a later date to do on the west side of the road. I think it's got to be done at the same time. I think you need to do both the east side and the west side and get a straight path for the water to flow. So, but I, I'm just coming to you guys. I, I need some assistance here. So, thank you. Thank you. Can you, can you add anything, Eric, to what he said? No, I think. They're both right. I think both sides of the maybe will have to be done because once we push all that water forward, on it's just going to create more of a problem on the other side. Uh, I think this is something we can also get done without engineering more than what we have in house. Um, something we can put out to bid. I think uh, we've got money <clears throat> left over from Ann Terrace job to pay for this, so I think we can come up with the money. I think to pay for both of them. I think so. I have to look for sure, but I'm pretty sure. Would you estimate the other side about the same as what, I mean, roughly the same? Or, yeah, I mean, you're going to really put a swale the same size on both. Okay. So. Yeah, Ted, we were wanting to get this looked at first, and uh, Ted didn't have time to do the elevations on the other side yet, but mm -hmm. you know, he's been busy with other stuff as well. But I think we can get that done pretty quickly. And you think we have the money if we bid it out? I think so. Any other thoughts? So this cut and swell, I mean, putting one order towards Megan? 
I'm going to put more water and actually going towards the, uh, the creek that's in the back of the properties on the uh, west side of the lake. That's the intention is right. for it to get into that creek. So you essentially have a bottleneck right there because it's not, it has nowhere to go. Right. <clears throat> I, I honestly don't see an issue with this. I mean, if we can get this done and we have the money left over from the other, I mean, we had some work over there originally that we took to do and because that didn't need to be done. And, you know, it's not like we, we haven't identified some stormwater issues after these right. two storms. It's, so It's already stormwater money. Yeah, I, I think if we have it and we can do it, I think we would be... I make a motion that we fix this problem. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson to move forward with this. I have a second from Alderman Reese. Is there any further discussion? Do you have a comment, Alderman? No. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. We will look for you to uh, update us on how that goes. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council Bill zero, or, yeah, zero 063. Council Bill 63, a resolution of the Board of Alderman authorizing the city administrator to enter into an agreement with Midwest Heavy Construction LLC to construct a sidewalk along Jefferson Parkway in an amount not to exceed $185,521.70. Good evening, Mayor Board. Uh, I know we've talked about this a couple times. Uh, <coughs> Most of the funds for this is our STP funds that go away at the end of next year if we don't use them. So this will pretty much clean out our bank on that so that we don't have to give back any money. Um, in addition to that, uh, Parks has put 50000 towards this. We're going to need an additional 20000 to fill out the $185,000 contract. That money we've identified to come from the sidewalk program that we normally do. Um, if you'll recall, uh, beginning of budget season, we added money to it, and so we would take 20000 from that. Uh, Midwest Heavy Construction has not done work for us in the past, but the uh, person in charge of this is actually with uh, Groundbreaking, I think was the name of them. They did the Independence Bridge. He was on that project before they started having problems. Once he left, that's when all the problems started happening. Um, so it would be staff's recommendation to issue a construction contract with Midwest Heavy Builders. Is this from Keepers where the sidewalk stops at Keepers and goes all the way to the community center? Correct. And that's the distance we're talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing from Locust? There's, there's already a sidewalk mm -hmm. there and we're not redoing it yet. Okay. Look right there by those duplexes when you make the turn, there's an existing <clears throat> sidewalk to yeah. the end of that property. And we decided that we had a space already in front of their fence to yes. do that. Yes, and Keepers is aware of this. Are you aware of any problems that they've had since with the design? No, the, uh, the designers have been out talking with them, and they're very happy with it, what it's doing. Retaining wall, we've worked to uh, the best we can to match their, their block on their home, and so right now it's going well. So they're happy? Uh-huh. Oh, well, okay. Not bad. To be able to take her parents out on the front. So, yeah, it's, yeah. Good How job, about Chris. not bad? <laughs> I knew where you were going with that. Right. Any discussions about this? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to point out too, what those four places are going in out there. They were required to put in sidewalks. I'm sure they didn't like it at the time, but at this point, it's saving the city, the rest of the residents, money. Mm -hmm. And it's a much needed sidewalk. Yes, it is. It is. I wanted to yeah. ask, uh, did, 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 has the, have you dropped the plan to go between Southern's property there and make that walkway up behind the ball field and then into the uh, yes. end of the community center? Have you decided not to do that? Yeah, we, we have decided not to do that. Main reason was uh, that the keepers did not want that along their property. We had to use some of their property. Uh, the park board even. Um, offered some money to do that, and they didn't want to do that way. Um, <coughs> quite frankly, this uh, um, path is, is much better along the road. Oh, yeah. We've talked about that all along, mm -hmm. and so we're glad that it's worked out the way that it has. Okay, I just thought maybe you maybe had to keep your plan for like kind of a light up. 
tree covered walk or something up there. You had discussed that when I was one of the meetings. Yeah, actually, as far as the bicycle and pedestrian plan, yeah, um, with the uh, uh, the master plan, it does show those type of trails through North Park, yeah. which we can do at any time, either in house or whatever. But this is the development for the sidewalk along the road. Yeah, I agree, it'd be better. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions, discussion? All right, I'd entertain a motion to suspend the ruling and move Council Bill 63 to the second reading. I'll make that motion. Second. A motion from Oliver Dickerson and a second from Alvin Miller. I'll need a roll call, please. It's a resolution. It's a resolution. Oh, this one's a resolution. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. I looked ahead. So we don't need a suspension. So do you want to? I make that motion. All right. Way to go, Randy. Keep me in the line. Okay. That's right. Okay. So now I have a motion to approve Council Bill 63 and a second from Alderman Milner. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? And Council Bill 63 becomes Resolution R037. Thank you. All right. Council Bill 64. First reading, Council Bill 64, an ordinance approving an agreement for police services between the City of Harrisonville and the Harrisonville Cass R9 School District, authorizing the City Administrator to sign the agreement and establishing an effective date. So we brought you the uh, original uh, agreement between the schools. We have come to, uh, after much discussion and uh, much work by our city attorney, to uh, get a, a, an agreement put together. Uh, we have put an agreement that we feel is uh, in the best interest of the school and of the police department. Uh, and due to the fact that we were getting to this point of the agreement, the SROs were allowed to go back into the schools. Uh, they're right now at training. Uh, they'll be back next week. Uh, but we believe that we have an agreement that is good for the city and for the school. Discussion? Questions? I think we hashed this out a few weeks ago a little bit, and I think everybody was pretty familiar. So, um, this is an ordinance, so on this one, I would need a motion to su suspend the ruling. I move to suspend the ruling. Okay. I have a motion from Alderman Milner and a second from Alderman Dickerson. We'll need a roll call, please. <coughs> Alderman Bowman? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Bachelman? Aye. Alderman Milner? Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. Alderman Long? Absent. All right. Second reading, please. Second reading, Council Bill 64, an ordinance approving an agreement for police services between the City of Harrisonville and the Harrisonville Cass R9 School District, authorizing the City Administrator to sign the agreement and establish an effective date. All right. Roll call again, please. Alderman Milner? Aye. Alderman Turner? Aye. Alderman Dickerson? Aye. Alderman Reese? Aye. Alderman Bowman? Aye. Alderman Bachelman? Aye. Alderman Long? Absent. All right. And Council Bill 64 becomes Ordinance 03415. Uh, Council Bill 65. Uh, first reading, Council Bill 65, an ordinance authorizing a variance for the developer of Harrisonville Villas, a variance of the approved subdivision plat by not requiring Timber Drive to extend to the west property line. So Harrisonville Villas uh, requested that the city weigh the requirement uh, to extend the, um, the street and the sidewalk, uh, allow it to stop where it is currently. It uh, intersects with the private drive that extends up to the, the individual residences that are in there. Uh, the improvement costs have exceeded expectations according to the developers, uh, and they brought that to me and my course of action is to send it to planning and zoning first uh, because it's a variance on our codes. So planning and zoning commission reviewed the request and then discussed it. After their discussion they recommended it for approval. Uh, the bill has also requested that the city install the sidewalk along Jefferson Parkway but after we reviewed it and uh, our street superintendent Rodney Jacobs got me the, the, the numbers back, it was cheaper for them to go ahead and put the sidewalk in. So the Jefferson Parkway sidewalk that we just talked about will be extended through their property as well on Jefferson Parkway. Uh, but to complete this, uh, variance such as this has to be approved by the <coughs> Board of Aldermen. Uh, it was approved by the Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, by the way, there are four buildings now occupied at, uh, at the Villas. Do you have any questions? Okay, you just said that the street, the sidewalk will go 
from the community center in front of that? Along is that the continuation of what we're just doing and what we just voted on? Yes. We're going to take that all the way through there? No, they are going to they finish are. that. Okay. That's part of their project. Sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. I thought that's the way I understood no, it, but sorry. I wanted to make sure. But the only thing before us is the, that road that comes into the development when it gets to where their access road to the actual buildings, it would stop there rather than going on past that into no man's land that there's nothing in there at this point. Um, this was something that was discussed in early conversations when this project was first brought. Um, it was actually an item to be discussed at planning and zoning when this was first being platted. Um, the architect was there at that time and I think they just, they, you know, they're on such a time constraint with those projects because of their way their funding works that he said they, you know, we're not going to worry about it, we're going to move forward. Well, now that we've come back, we're towards the end of the project and they're looking at total costs, they're asking about it again. So it's not something that hasn't been brought up before, it's something they did ask about, it just never got to a discussion point. Uh, so it's not something that is pulled out of thin air and said, hey, you know, we'll do this now. They, they brought it up before, it just never reached this point for discussion. So. So I guess my question would have to be, if they're not going to complete their part of the project, whose responsibility is it going to be later down the road? Because it's not going to be the city. No, it would not be the city. But um, whose would it be? If it's on their property, they should have to take it to the property line just like Burris Ridge was required to take theirs and step them into my property on the north and uh, or Burris Ridge on the south and the ranch on the north. Yep. So they were required to do that, do their sidewalks, do their curbing. Okay. Why would we not require this project the same? Because, I mean, I'm just, just asking because, mm -hmm. I mean, if we are requiring that and that's what in the original agreement was supposed to be done, it's not our fault that they're an old one. Well, there are things that, that did result um, you remember the whole debacle inspection. But again, that's part of um, being a developer. There were there were issues with some of the, uh, I believe it was the sewer lines and, and what was actually on the original drawings as far as requirement that caused some delay. We did get that remedy, but it did cause delay. And I think they ran into rock out there. Did they not? And that probably. What I them what I heard about out. the rock is it was it was no more than what they had anticipated. I mean I don't know where I never heard from them that they had rock issues. I just, I, I guess, I, I don't, I, I think we are setting ourselves up to end up paying for a street because who else is going to do it? Whoever hooks onto that road is going to pay for it. Why would, they, why would they pay for somebody else's property line? Why would they pay for a road on somebody else's property? They want to hook up to it. Well, if it's not there, they can't hook up to it. They, so I probably ought to interject here that the the village is responsible right now for what's on their property. Mm -hmm. If the track that it's adjacent to them develops, uh, the village could grant them permission to build the sidewalk, but I would think that track would be required under the zoning to build the sidewalks on their property and likely not the sidewalks on Villa's property. Now, this is the street though, this is the, the collector road in between. Uh, and it's what what I have heard is, is a lot of times when you have adjacent properties like that is when someone develops the other side is it's a shared cost. Well they've put the road to agree, I think three fourths of the way to the edge of the property. Whoever develops the other side would have very little to finish if they needed that road. But why would they want to pay for it? <laughs> I mean seriously, why would they want to pay for it? Okay, and I, no thought, benefit to them. I thought we were, I thought they were going into the property line, but the other question I have is, are they talking about maybe adding on, and then that still would become the road at a later date? I, I don't know. I, don't, I, have I mean, heard. I know, I realize what, now I know what this is about. Mm -hmm. I was under the impression that they were going to... Go to their buy, property line? No, no, yeah, well, that, but they were going to buy the property adjacent to theirs for another development. I mean, if they did that, it would, they would, if they did I mean, buy another... I don't another, know if that's true, but that's what... If I they did buy another property adjacent, they would... Uh, they would complete the street. Well, it, it could be 
part of the cost of doing that, that it would be in that project rather than in this project. And that's, that's what I'm saying. We'd be the part same people paying for it. If they buy it. I don't know who's, I don't but know that anybody's no bought that. No, I don't know that anybody's no. bought that. Wellborn has all that property right now, besides what the villa sits on. <clears throat> That'd be sort of a negative thing for Mr. Welburn to say, here, I have this property, but you're going to have to pay for the road. Well, if anybody who builds in there would pay for, I mean, even if they stub it the rest of the way, any other additional roads they would be paying for. I mean, he's not, <coughs> Mr. Welburn, I don't see him paying for any roads back in there. So. Right, right. That, but I think it would make it difficult for him to sell it, if, if he was wanting to sell it. Could you guys use your mics, please? Oh, sorry, <laughs> What I said was, I, I thought it might be difficult for Mr. Wilford to sell that property if, if he was going to have to tell someone, I will sell you this property, but you're going to have to build the road because we determined that the other folks didn't have to do that. That they didn't have to fulfill their part of the contract. I, I, I don't, I am against this. I, so, I don't feel like this is something we need to start a precedent on. How much of road are we talking about the one and two? I don't remember the exact distance. Happy to you. It's about I mean, two, it's on your sheet in green. Yeah, it's about 200 feet. It's packet page 43. Because I guess, I guess the other question would be, what would be stopping any other developer going down the road from coming in and saying, hey, you know what, I'm out of money. I don't want to put the rest of my road in either. And you did it once before, so I want the same thing. I just think that's a precedent that I don't know that we want to start. Yeah, I, I, do too. I So, if they finish this road all the way to the end, and then someone else buys the land behind them and develops it, and no one hook onto this road, do they have to pay for a portion of what it costs to put the initial road in, or just, they just tie just into to it? Just to step up to it? To it. I've seen issues like this in, in other municipal situations and I suppose one possibility you could consider is you could approve the variance with the condition we'd have to rewrite this uh, that if the adjacent at the time the adjacent property develops they would have to pay their share of the extension of the road and sidewalk at that time yeah, there's nothing to do with sidewalks on it, so that wouldn't be an issue. But if they, if they, if we did that and they sold it, then, then who uh, yeah, yeah. 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 Now, you know, I, I feel like this project has been a great project, and I think it's a true asset to our community. However, I think we've already spent taxpayer money on bringing in inspectors to get their stuff completed because they felt like we were moving too slow on that project. So we granted them that grace. Um, I, I personally feel like I'm, I feel like we've done our fair share and they need to hold up to their end of the agreement. Paul McBowman, did you have something to add down? I was just going to add that that amount that we paid to hire an independent inspector um, at the time that our employee left was $10,000. You know, we've already spent $10,000 to help them move their project along. Um, I, I feel bad for them that they have cost overruns, but I don't feel like we need to subsidize their development. And again, I guess my big concern is that as a city, at some point, we are going to end up getting stuck for this rest, putting the rest of this street in at some point, and I don't feel that that's a necessary thing for us to do. My thought on it is that, and I think Mark mentioned this to begin with, um, is that if we do it for these folks and somebody down the line says, I want the same same consideration, what are we going to do? Say, well, yeah, but that's a little different. Or are we just, I mean, what are we doing here? If this was a normal housing development, Here's your microphone brand. Been put in, and that expense would have been split over all of the lots in that subdivision. And here there's just one lot. And to have our whole road put on one lot seems to be a little bit extreme. Okay. That was their choice. Well, to, uh, for the, the property behind to share some of that road, I right, think is acceptable. But that property may never sell. 
So if it never sells, what's the use of the road? It's part of their original plan, and it's part of the original thing that they got their grants and all of their um, federal funding for to put in this project, and I think that's what they started out with, and they need to finish the project as platted to begin with. Okay, I want, I, need, I want some more information. I, I agree with what you're saying. I kind of agree with Matt saying that it is a little bit more than I had originally planned. So what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to postpone this okay. until we can talk to them, maybe make a uh, different arrangement or something. Is that you can make a motion to postpone. That is. I am making a motion to postpone. Okay. A uh, motion from Alderman Dickerson to postpone. Before we get, when you say again, what do you want to do with that time? I'd like to like to send this back to them and see what we can work out. It's a little bit more than I had imagined, and so I'd like to see if there's some bargaining we could go with them or talk to them or find out exactly what we're doing. How long? If I thought that was, um, if you want to, how long do you want to postpone? The next meeting. Postpone the next meeting. Yeah. Okay. The motion from Alderman Dickerson is to postpone this till our next regular scheduled meeting. Second from Alderman Turner. Any further discussion? Yes. Um, if we're going to postpone it to have further conversation with them, I would like to know who's going to have that conversation and who will have access to the result of the conversation. Because I feel it should be the entire board and not just a few select people. I happy. Why don't we have a work session instead? at 6 o'clock before our regular meeting and invite them to come and talk to the full board. I just, I, I guess my only concern about your statement though is we really don't have to bargain with them. It's their property, it was their plan, they need to finish their project. I thought if there was some way to strike a happy medium on this, maybe we could do that. We could always vote no. Okay, I still have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Opposed? No. All right, so. All right, so <coughs> we do have first, this was first reading, so we don't have to do second reading tonight. We can move on and still come back at the next meeting. All right. How's that? <coughs> All right. That is it for our agenda items. Uh, we are ready for Alderman Committee Report, Alderman Bowman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, it's good to see Chris Deal in the audience. Chris and I spent several hours together in Red Cross training, um, disaster Red Cross training, along with some volunteers from the Harrisonville Police Department and the Cass County Sheriff's Office. So I am pleased, thank you, Chris, for um, offering the community center for that training. It was great for a simulation disaster setup. And I appreciate the fact that now we have local people who can, when the need arises, um, open a disaster shelter here in Harrisonville. The community center has been designated a disaster shelter for a long time. But what the Kansas City Red Cross people have learned is that in a disaster, depending on what type of disaster and the extent, sometimes it takes a while for the Kansas City Red Cross people to get here. So it was important for us as a local community to have people trained that in the event of a disaster that the shelter could be opened by local people until the Kansas City people could arrive. So we're really glad to have gotten that done and I think it's a nice, um, addition to the community to make us a little bit safer and stronger and better. So thank you, Chris. Um, thank you, staff. That's all, Mr. Mayor. All right, thank you. Alderman Bachman? No. Alderman Reese? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about the parade. I don't know how many of you folks got to see the homecoming parade. It goes right past my house, so I get to see it very nicely. It was a wonderful parade. It showed the true spirit of Harrisonville. It showed the kids, it showed the adults, it showed the different organizations within the school district, and some that weren't a part of the Harrisonville, like the Harrisonville Christian Schools. And I was really, really impressed. Um, and I don't know who's responsible for putting all that together, but whoever does that is, is highly underrated. They've done a nice job. 
I do want to say, I want to ask Cooper about this. Maybe you'll be able to answer my question. We work really hard to keep those streets cleared so the kids and the bands and all those folks can get past there. And on our block, because we run out and we make people move, we, we do that from 8 o'clock in the morning when we see them pull up. We tell them they can't park there afternoon, and so it's all night to quit. Uh, this next block up had all kinds of people on it. Are, are they not notified, or is there a, a... I guess I don't know what you mean by the next block up towards the square. No, the this one, one right here. <laughs> yes. This one right here. Yeah, I mean, we can't clear the whole parade route. We, we tried yeah. this year to yeah. keep them off the square, the first block on, on Pearl yeah. Street here, and then down Chestnut and a couple areas where the elementary schools were yeah. standing. Yeah. Um, but I that was quite an undertaking. It actually oh, took place yeah. by the, the night crew the night before putting out cones. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, normally those, you know, normally we don't have that problem. I don't know what happened this year, but uh, it was full. This, this, and it was funny because from from the old church, I guess it's still church, mm -hmm. down there, Chris up, Baptist. clear up to past my mom's house, which is, mm -hmm. okay, that was all clear. And then from there up to the square, we counted, there was... Seven, seven cars that were parked up in there. And I really wanted to go put notes on that because it's a nasty thing. <laughs> I didn't know if I was left. So from your mom's house, house to the square there were seven cars? Yeah. Oh, those weren't supposed to be there. That no. was all supposed to be there. Yeah, right. I was out of state. I did not attend. Oh, so. no. <laughs> I wasn't blaming the police department. Well, I we are responsible for trying to do it. We did do as citizens. I mean, our notes put on those cars? Or, because surely, I made those people didn't even know that they were supposed to be. Gone. Anyway, the parade was wonderful. The kids managed to deal with that quite well. So, oh, that's enough. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Alderman Miller. I just wanted to thank our city attorney for getting the um, agreement with the school district for the SROs taken care of promptly. Um, I, I, I think people underestimate the value of that and what our, how our citizens feel about that, and I, I appreciate your effort. Um, something else about the parade that Judy touched on, um, and I know you, I, and most people probably know what a person is, but our head coach, Coach Maxwell, um, took it upon himself, knowing that the kindergarten kids were going to be in a certain spot on uh, Pearl Street, or on Wall Street. No, Pearl, Pearl, Street. Pearl Street. And um, knew that they were walking from their building up here. And we're talking little five-year-olds and little six-year-olds who, you know, they get thirsty and they have to go to the bathroom and they have to do everything even though they just went five minutes ago. But he took it upon himself to bring big jugs of water, ice water, cups, um, up and put them on Jill Filer's porch where all the kindergartners were going to be so that they had drinks and they were happy little campers sitting there watching the parade. And it was quite an amazing thing. Yeah, so if anybody sees him, you need to thank him and tell him what a, a kind gesture that was. I have just one more for a comment. Oh, really? That's a good one. That's a good <laughs> oh, one. You're fine. Go, good ahead. One. Go ahead. I wanted to compliment Mr. Fairfield this evening because he has said Harrisonville every time. <laughs> I focused. Uh, I didn't good. slur. Just uh, very good. <laughs> all right. Is that all of the movie? I'm done. I got all nothing right. else. Alderman Dickerson? Uh, just to comment because I got to go to the MML conference and it was very informative as usual. And uh, one treat was we got to go through Bagel Dam, mm. which they haven't had any tours since 9 11. Okay. And, they, and the staff and everyone there worked hard. What was it, 40 people that went on that tour? I think so. There were two separate tours. Yeah, yeah it was really something to see. Um, the lifespan of, that they get out of the engines there, uh, it was hard to believe that the motors that run that are the original ones that were put in back in 1930. The turbines and the electric motors are huge things. I asked what kind of bearings was in them and how they grease them, nobody had a clue. They just <laughs> keep running. So, But uh, I was very, very impressed with that. It, it, I wished everybody could go through it. But it... It is really something to see. It really is. What an achievement that was. That's all. Mm -hmm. Alderman Turner. Yeah. <clears throat> I myself also attended the uh, annual conference. Uh, Clean up classes. I received my plaque. So I'm a certified municipal official now. 
I got the plaque to prove it. <laughs> and, uh, then I also attended the uh, homecoming Friday, the pep rally in the morning. That was quite a deal. And wow, then cool. the parade, and then we went to the football game. Mm -hmm. I was busy the entire day. I thought, I took off work, I thought I'd get something done at home. <laughs> no, I didn't. But that's it. Did you stay for the whole game? Yes. There was a lot of people that didn't. That, 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 that last minute proves she never leave till it's amazing. over and never give up. All right. Mr. Welch. All right, a couple of things I got to give you an update and um, update on the report. Let's go with uh, item three. The Rodney Harrisonville group is having a get together for businesses on the square. But they've also invited the uh, alderman and the mayor. If you want to be there Thursday night, 5 30, and it'll be at the Brick House. And you're invited to attend. Uh, we had hoped to have the budget ready tonight to pass out, kind of an overview, rough, uh, rough budget, but <coughs> because of the MPR conference and the MML conference, it's kicked us in the butt and we're two weeks behind. So uh, I would like for the board to meet next Monday for a work session at uh, six or seven, depends on what you all want to do. Six. So, I'm sorry. Six, okay. Uh, and we would like to, at that point, hand out a rough copy of the budget and begin discussion. Um, pizza? Pizza. 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 Really? <laughs> sorry, I can't make a motion for that, but I would. <laughs> we'll work on that. It's a suggestion. It's okay. a board suggestion. There you go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Now, if I get you guys here, that, that's worth the cost. All right. uh, so we'll go over that, and then we'll then look towards uh, a couple of work sessions on Monday and Tuesday, <coughs> the 9th and 10th, and that would be when the uh, uh, department heads come in and talk about their capital requests. Uh, these are usually, we'll, we'll look at what it takes to run the department, but then the capital requests are the extras, and those are the things that you have to look at to determine if you want the, if, if this meets what you think the city should be uh, accomplishing or not. So. Figure again on that on the 9th and 10th of October. Uh, City Hall's roof replacement should begin Wednesday with any luck. Uh, may have been delayed because of the rain today. Uh, and we will start discussions with the hospital on the ambulance transfer contract. It'll be up at the end of November. Uh, it's one of the major contracts that we've got, so we'll be uh, we're starting discussions next Monday. That's all I got. Is there any questions? Sure. All right. I guess it's my turn. Um, I also was at the MML conference uh, this last week and uh, got an opportunity to go through the dam as well. It was a, a very interesting experience. Uh, I'm very glad I got to do that. Um, there was definitely a lot of good sessions. Um, always, always good to uh, uh, network with other communities, find out what they've been doing, what's changing in their communities. Uh, it, it's a very, very good event. I joined Alderman Turner with us receiving my plaque as well, uh, completing all my uh, requirements. Uh, so it was uh, definitely a good conference. Uh, I had the privilege of speaking at the pep rally on Friday, and I must say that's the largest crowd I think I've ever spoken in front of. Uh, that stadium was packed full, but it was really fun to see all the different uh, uh, grades able to attend. Uh, I did a little roll call at the beginning, and. They seemed to really get into it to see if they could outdo their, their uh, <laughs> we went from oldest to youngest, so I think they were trying to outdo the older ones as we went down. Uh, but it was a great event, uh, so thank you to the school and the student council uh, for putting on such a good event as well as the parade. Um, I also want to mention, I have a little challenge uh, with C.J. Hicks, the mayor of Pleasant Hill. Uh, not this Friday, but the Friday after, Harrisonville plays Pleasant Hill here. The winner of that game, the, uh, or shall I say the losing town, uh, their mayor has to wear the winning team's colors and shirt to their next board meeting and have their picture taken to, uh, uh, he's talked to the Pleasant Hill Times. And I, I would, I'm sure our local newspapers would be glad to jump on that. Uh, they, the, the winning team has to supply the winning, or the winning mayor supplies the losing mayor with their attire to wear. So, Will you be at the game dressed so we can take pictures of you together? I, I will be at the game. I, I've encouraged him to come and, and sit, uh, sit together, so I'll see if I can work that out. And, okay. And uh, so that that should be fun. He, he mentioned something last year about it, and it was just too close to the game. We couldn't get it worked out. So 
uh, should be a good time and, and good for the good for both towns. So I look forward to that game. Um, and I did. What was the total number on our brush drop off? Did we? Well, I believe it was 46 vehicles. And was that a decent for having a? I mean, I know it was a unscheduled originally, and then we scheduled it because of the storms. It was, it was, it was, it was good, and I think we'll still have the same amount we normally have in October. Right. Well, we'll have the wood chips and the. the compost at the October one, so I know there's some people asking about that. So, All right, and that's all I have this evening. So motion to adjourn. All right. Second. <laughs> <laughs> you slow tonight. I was just saying something. Before we, we play Pleasant Hill here, correct? Correct. That is also, just so you all know, um, anybody coming to the game, that it will also be a night where you can bring stuff for bright futures. There will be barrels. It's a challenge between Pleasant Hill and Harrisonville. Mm -hmm. And normally we kill them on it. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I have a motion from Alderman Dickerson, second from Alderman Miller to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Good night, everyone. <laughs>